Here we are, Occupy Baltimore on October 21st. It's a Friday night and there's supposed to be a rally down here around race and gender. I'm gonna go check it out. Let's see what it might be. Sexism has got to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Sexism has got to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Transphobia has got to go. Hey, hey. Ho, ho. Transphobia has got to go. One. We are the people. Two. A little bit louder. Three. We want justice for all Test. people. One. We are the people. Two. A little bit louder. Three. We want justice for all people. There they go. Hey, hey. Ho, oh, ho. In a harbor. Hi. <laughs> Is this your first time to occupy Baltimore tonight? You want to talk a little bit? All right. That's perfectly fine. No? All right. Well, welcome. Glad you're Thank here. You. Are you going to stay for General Assembly? What time, what time is that? It's at 8 o'clock. It's consensus model, and we need people to be there. It's really interesting to experience and see it in action. It's a little sloppy, but consensus is, oh, yeah. looks like that because we're not used to it. So I'm excited about it. of Baltimore. It's a Friday night and there's supposed to be a rally down here around race and gender. As I was standing over there, I ran into this gentleman. Named Dwayne Davis, a.k.a. Shorty. Shorty. Can I call you Shorty? Everybody calls me Shorty. All right. I've heard of Shorty. I wonder if it's the same it's Shorty. It's the same, but one Shorty in Baltimore. Only about one. That's <laughs> yeah, you. That's me. All right. So what are you doing down here? I'm helping uh, support Occupy Baltimore, but uh, I've been doing this long before they did it, and I appreciate them doing this because we need people to come out in numbers to complain about the injustices that go on across our community. It's not a race thing. It's a class because now 
a lot of uh, white people are getting the experience what unemployment is feeling like, what joblessness is feeling like. You're starting to feel like the ghetto been feeling for the last 20, 30, 40 years, and it don't feel good. We used to not having money in the bank, so when the banks collapsed, it didn't hurt us. We worry about the pawn shop not opening up, all right? Y'all worry about Bank of America. Bank of America been robbing us and sticking us for years. That's why we don't have bank accounts. We, I'm here to represent the Cradle of Prison Pipeline and how you're incarcerating blacks, Hispanics, and poor whites. Could you repeat that, the what kind of pipeline? Prison the pipeline. Cradle to Prison Pipeline that exists here in the state of Maryland. It's a Maryland's cash cow. It's where it's, uh, it's your dirty money and it's unregulated. You got the justice, the judges and the lawyers are all in cahoots with this. You got a public defender defending a man and he won't take him to trial, he'll plead him out. If you take him to trial, half the cases will be won in, with a jury. And But we as a people don't know that because we're not intelligent enough to understand the judicial process. I went to court, I beat him in, the, in court. I used this toilet right here in court. You see right here is the evidence sign. And they charged me with a terrorist activity, a bomb threat. They call this toilet a bomb. And all this toilet is is the truth. It's about how you exploit Martin Luther King's dream and you exploit Christianity and you exploit these words when they're beneficial to you as individuals. You took an oath of office to defend all the people in the state of Maryland. That's not the rich, all the people. And you as an elected official have to do your job as an elected official. Governor O'Malley, all the way down to a police officer. You're here to serve and protect the community. And that's what you're here for. Let me get this straight. You're telling me that you were arrested because you had this toilet on the street? I put this toilet in front of the Towson Courthouse on February the 6th, Sunday, February the 6th. And they locked me up for putting the to that toilet in front of there. It had names of different uh, public officials and news agencies that uh, know about the toilet and what the toilet represents. It represents how you treat the underclass in America. You treat us like shit. If you are a, a, a resident of the state of Maryland, I urge you and encourage you to stand up. Support Occupy Baltimore and support occupying the streets. If you don't start standing up for yourself, who is? Because your government ain't standing up for you. Your elected officials ain't doing their jobs. They sitting here bickering about bipartisan issues rather than taking care of the issues that affect us as a people. It ain't about color, it's about us as a people. If we bailed out Bank of America and we bailed out the insurance company, who bailed them out? We did. So where's our dividends? You gonna tax us into, into, into what? Economic poverty? Economic and social injustice? We as a people need to stand up and say enough is enough. If Martin was here, he wouldn't accept it, so why should I? Thank you, Shorty. Thank you. Thank you. Martin Luther King. Have you been over to the monument yet? Up the street. D.C. Yeah. This yeah. The toilet been there, too. I'm a homeless dog in the How long you been down here? Since the first day. Since the first day. So you've been on the streets for some time, but you've been here since day one at Occupy Baltimore and McKeldin Center, sir? Yes, ma'am, I have. First, I'd like to say most people don't know their rights as far as the Constitution is concerned. And I encourage them to read the Constitution, at least the, uh, the 10 uh, Bill of Rights, to know their rights because we've been uh, attacked every day by the government from all fronts and we just don't know our rights. So we don't even stand up for what uh, this country was founded on. What's this? This is my work. It's called, What Do You Want From Me? And all of these statistics have been proven statistics by the government. And I read a couple of them, not really take up all the time. All right. Do you not, mind telling me your name, sir? Okay, oh. my name is John Coker. I'm an artist, and I've just been released from ECI prison and for a charge that I didn't do uh, because of the ineptitude of my lawyer and, and the government officials who were easy trying to make a conviction. Read me some of your statistics. Okay, uh, one statistic is 42 million American adults are functionally illiterate. Two thirds of all students who cannot read proficiently by the end of the fourth grade end up in jail or on welfare. 
and eight out of 10 inmates in prison are high school dropouts. And the reason I call it, what do you want from me? Because the finger is accusing the government of being doing a disservice as far as education is concerned, as far as welfare is concerned, as far as housing is concerned, and as far as jobs is concerned. And the government is turning a blind eye and selling the public a dream of them buying into the American dream. And right now it's just a dream. Thank you very much, Mr. Coker. Thank you. Are these your books? Yes, sir. All of these here? Uh-oh, mic check. Okay. We will have a seated meditation, bro. We will have a seated meditation, bro. In the corner by the burnt out light. In the corner by the burnt out light. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Thank you. Is that your work? Yes, ma'am. I'm wow. four shows next year. I'm just getting my work lined up for next year, just uh, trying to be prepared. Yes, I'm just showing the examples of my work and that I'm really uh, not a person that they consider just being homeless. I don't consider myself homeless. I consider myself a man who doesn't have a home. Right now, I still carry myself with pride and dignity, and I also aspire to donate 10% of my uh, proceeds from my uh, work to help uh, occupy Baltimore. Uh -huh. And I'll have shows up at the uh, American Visionary Art Museum next year, City Arts, people know where these places are, in Art Pratt Library and Design Arts Gallery Cafe on uh, North Charleston. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. See you later. This is where they feed people over here. They've been doing meals every day. So of course the homeless are here because there's food to be had which is a wonderful thing. In the society I desire, everybody will have enough to eat. But I, but I think it's important to remember from each according to their ability, to each according to their need, food, hunger. Food is a need. Seven easy steps to fix the system. Number one. Pass H.R. 1489, Return to Prudent Banking Act, Hello? that reinstates many provisions hey, of glass steel on. Act. Here we go. Here we go. We're having a rally. The people united!
Okay, Friday night. This is the rally for, or I guess you could say against, sexism and racism in Baltimore, in the United States, in the world. At Occupy Baltimore, Friday night, October 20th. It's like two and a half weeks since they landed here. Here we are. Inner Harbor. General Assembly starts in about five minutes. This is prior to General Assembly benefits. about next it week's activities. Not something that takes money out of public coffers and puts it into development private hands human and rights. doesn't respect any of the rest of us. So I, woo! so I have flyers here. You should all come. It's going to be an incredibly fun, awesome weekend. United Workers Conference. People from around the world, from what I understand. United Workers from Friday until Sunday. Check it out. It's not that expensive either. It's about $35 for the whole weekend. All right, where's that General Assembly meeting? Thank mm -hmm. you. 